Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to today's Caffeine for the Soul. If you haven't already done it, please go to the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store and download your very own copy of the Caffeine for the Soul app. And you'll not only be able to listen to these podcasts as they come out and listen to the years of, of, of previous podcasts, but you'll also have access to our old Might Help Can't Hurt interview series. You'll get to do the free basic course, which is an introduction to all the work that I do, and you'll get access to a ton of some of our most popular videos, all in one place and all available on your phone or smart device. I did a newsletter at the beginning of 2023, which I, I called the fountain of eternal youth or the only fountain of eternal youth and and it was it was based on a a little excerpt from remembrance of things past by marcel proust and you you may have heard uh most people who know proust who aren't like literary enjoyers who who, who don't get off on reading 19th century french literature know him because of a quote that is often uh translated as uh, the the only true voyage of discovery is not to visit new worlds, but to look with new eyes. And that's an incomplete translation. The actual translation, the, 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 the whole passage, is the only true discovery, the only fountain of eternal youth, would be not to visit strange lands, but to possess other eyes. To behold the universe through the eyes of another, of a hundred others, to behold the hundred universes that each of them beholds, that each of them is. We have a concept in our work we often talk about as separate realities, which is the recognition of the fact that each human being lives in his or her own, their own separate reality, their own thought-created world. And there may be overlap between our worlds. We may use similar words to describe things in our worlds. But just because of the way we're made, because we live in a world of thought, not a world of circumstance, there is no, no way that my world can be exactly like your world. The philosopher Francis Bacon talked about the three idols of the Western world, three illusions that were very popular in the Western world during, during his time, which was, I think, the 17th century. I should probably know that, but, but, but I don't. And one of the idols of the Western world, as he articulated them, was your cave is just like my cave. In other words, we just assume that everybody lives in the same world as us and therefore sees the same thing as we do, which is why it's so confusing when they come to different conclusions. So what, is, what does this all have to do with the fountain of eternal youth? One of the things that I've learned to ask people on my programs is when they come back from an exercise or a break or an exploration that we've done together, I, I pretty much always ask them, what, if, what are you seeing new and fresh? And I explain that specifically what I'm interested in is what are they seeing that was not what they saw when they walked into the room that morning, that was not necessarily even how it looked to them at the beginning of the exercise. Because we've all seen cool things and we have our cool theories about life, but it's what we see new and fresh that opens up the possibility of experiencing a new and fresh world. And if you think about it, who lives in a constant state of wonder? Babies. Babies, if you've spent any time around them, and I highly encourage you to do so if you haven't, obviously with the parents' permission, doesn't go well otherwise, but babies live in this eternal state of wonder and awe. And in spiritual teachings, they will often refer to this state of mind, this state of being, as newborn consciousness. It does not mean 
that to go back to become as little children means you have to forget everything you know. That would be a return to ignorance, not a return to innocence. It just means that that capacity to experience the world new and fresh, to experience the world through another's eyes, is built into us. And there's, there's three ways that I've seen that just help, help you notice, are you seeing new and fresh? Or are you seeing through the, the scratchy windows of your own memory and imagination? And, and, and one is the difference between exploring and researching. And sometimes in groups, I'll, 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 I'll make the distinction, but I'll, I'll ask the group to turn around and stare at the back wall of whatever room we're in. And generally speaking, about half to two thirds of the group does, and half to two thirds of uh, half to a third of the group continues looking straight at me. And I'll say, if you're looking at the back wall right now, you're exploring. If you're looking at me, waiting to see what point I'm going to make, you're researching. So you're trying to gather information that you can look at later and make conclusions about, as opposed to just looking and seeing what you see. And when you explore any of the ideas in these podcasts, in fact, when you explore kind of anything in the world, if you bring to it that spirit of exploration versus the, the mental construct of researching, you'll have more of that newborn consciousness. You'll have more of that sense of awe and wonder. Another is the difference between looking in real time tasting in real time, listening in real time, and listening through memory, looking through a memory, tasting through a memory. There's a wonderful moment in the movie Once, which is famous for the song Falling Slowly, which won the Academy Award for Best Song that year, where it, it, this guy is at a party with his girlfriend and she goes off somewhere and suddenly this gorgeous woman comes into the room and he's like oh, you know just struck by her by by her beauty and her sexuality and you know there's an implication that he feels a little guilty and then he realizes it's his girlfriend he just saw her for a moment new and fresh he saw her not the memory of her, the character of her. And most of us are in relationships with our memories. We're in relationship not with the partner who is actually sitting in front of us, but through an accumulation of stories and ideas of who that person is. Now, they might be nice stories. They might be not so nice stories. But it's not the same as those moments where we experience them fresh. The Scottish mystic Sid Banks, on whose teachings a lot of my work are, are built, there was a sort of a running joke that every cup of tea Sid had was the best cup of tea he'd ever had. Now, I've, I've been told unless it was cold, in which case he'd ask for it to be sent back. But, but he just experienced each cup of tea that fresh, that new, with that kind of newborn consciousness. A, a third way I sometimes think about it is it's the difference between what is and what isn't. I've done only unofficial uh, exploration in this area, but it seems to me that most people spend about 95% of their time on what isn't, thinking about what has happened in the past, what might happen in the future, what they're worried about, what they're hoping for, what they, what they fear will happen again, what, imagine what if this happened? Yeah, but what if, what if I had been run off the road? And, and our minds are so filled with what isn't that we miss what is. And so another way to access that place of newborn consciousness, that new and fresh way of being in the world, is simply to focus on what is, even to enjoy what is, and to just ignore what isn't. But your, your homework for the week, your assignment, if you want to play with it, is to spend as much time this week as you can in newborn consciousness. Experience things new and fresh. Don't research, explore. Don't live in your remembered past as best you can. Experience things fresh in real time. And if you notice that you're caught up in what isn't 
as best you can, just let it go and reconnect with the wonder and mystery of what is. Have fun, learn heaps, happy exploring, and I'll talk with you soon. <laughs>